you're welcome to my channel in this video we are going to look at the tax rates for employees yeah how employees are charged tax the income tax act requires employers while making payments of employment income in any month to withhold tax at a prescribed withholding pay tax rate and pay the tax withheld by the 15th day of the following month to the ura yeah, and uh, the tax rates for employees are categorized into two. There are those for resident individuals and then those for non-resident individuals. Yeah, we are going to first look at the table for those of resident individuals. Yeah, on an annual basis. Yeah. So the first category is if, an, if a resident individual is earning an amount not exceeding 2,820,000 per year, they do not pay any tax. Yeah, and in order for you to get what they're earning per month, we just divide this by 12. Yeah. Then in case in case a resident in video is earning an amount exceeding 2,820,000 per year, but not exceeding 4,020,000, they pay a tax rate of 10% of the amount by which the chargeable income exceeds the 2 million. 820,000. Yeah. Then the third category, in case a resident employee is earning an amount exceeding the 4,020,000 per year, but not exceeding 4,920,000 per year, they are supposed to pay a tax of 120 plus 20% 20 of the amount which a chargeable income exceeds the 4,020,000. Yeah. And then the last category is categorized into two. We have part A and B. And this is when a resident employee is earning any amount that is exceeding 4,920,000 per year. Yeah. First is that they, they, they first pay a tax of 300 plus 30% by which the chargeable income exceeds 4,920,000. And part B, where a person is earning any amount that exceeds 120 million per year, they pay an additional 10% charged on the amount by which a chargeable income exceeds the 120 million. Yeah, so that is the category of uh, of resident individuals, the tax rate for employees for resident employees. Yeah. We shall be looking at the real calculations in another video. Yeah. Let's now look at the table for non-resident individuals. For non-resident individuals, we are looking at it at an annual basis. In case, in case an individual is earning an amount not exceeding four million twenty thousand per year, they are supposed to pay 10% tax. Yeah, 10% tax. Then in case an individual is earning any amount exceeding 4,020,000, but not exceeding 4,920,000 per year, they are supposed to pay a tax of shillings, 402,000 plus 20% of the amount by which the chargeable income exceeds Four million twenty thousand. Yeah. Then the third category: if an employee is earning any amount exceeding four million nine hundred twenty thousand per year, they are supposed to pay a tax of five hundred eighty-two thousand plus thirty percent of the amount by which the chargeable income exceeds four million nine hundred twenty thousand. But in, in cases where the chargeable income of an individual exceeds 120 million, they pay an additional they pay an additional tax of 10 percent charged on the amount by which the chargeable income exceeds 120 million. So this is the tax rate for the non-resident individuals. Yeah, the thing that changes is the tax rate. The tax rate changes. Yeah. Even these figures also change compared to that of resident individuals. Yeah, so you are supposed to put these tables in your head because they are not given in exams. 
yeah and we are going to look at practical examples in another video yeah so the, let's look at the employer's obligations employer's obligations what an employer is required to do first an employer has an obligation or a duty of withholding to deduct the correct tax at the time of affecting payment to every liable employee when they're giving out salary to their employees they're supposed to first deduct the correct amount of tax that the employee is supposed to pay then payment they're supposed to pay the total tax by the 15th day of the month immediately following the month in which the enrollment was made yes an employee has a duty of paying of paying the tax that was deducted to the URA. In accountability, an employee has an obligation to account for the tax deducted to every employee on a monthly basis. Then maintenance of employee records to maintain and keep them for inspection by URA or demand for at least five years. So those are the four main obligations of an employer withholding payment accountability maintenance of employee record then the employee <coughs> let's look at the employee's obligation what an employee is required to do in this thing of taxation for employment income yeah employees driving income from more than one source are required to complete at the end of the year at the end of the year of return to declare they're supposed to declare the total amount from all sources including business income they're supposed to give the total supposed to get the total taxes paid at source such as payee withholding tax or provisional tax yeah the, these are the examples of income tax payee withholding tax and provisional tax this includes excludes presumptive tax and then rental tax paid by such an employee yeah so they are supposed to get the total of the taxes that they pay then the total income from all sources and lastly they are supposed to get the tax payable yeah so those are the three obligations of an employee to get the total income from all sources including business income to get the total taxes paid at source and then to get the tax payable Now let's look at the employee's rates. Employee's rates, what an employee is entitled to. An employee is not required to furnish a pay return if the tax is fully deducted and paid at source. It's not required to furnish a return. Furnish a return, it's like paying, like giving details about your expenditure and income okay about the things that are required by the tax authority yeah then an employee is entitled to claim a refund of overpaid tax where applicable when you feel like you've paid tax more tax than you're required to pay you can claim a refund for the tax that you paid then an employee is entitled to accountability for all taxes deducted and paid as a source by the employer then an employee is not required to furnish a return of income if his or her only source of income is from employment. Yeah. So those are the four rates of an employee. He's not required to furnish a pay return if the tax is fully deducted and paid at source. Then he's entitled to refund in case of overpayment. He's entitled to accountability for all taxes. Then he's not required to furnish a return of income if his or her only source of income from employment yeah then here they're saying what happens if tax is not paid an employer who fails to withhold and pay the tax are required by law as required by law is personally liable to pay the tax together with the penal tax and interest their own since the that is charged on employment income is a responsibility of the employee employer if it's not paid it's 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 the employer's fault 
Yeah, so an employer who fails to withhold and pay the tax are required by law is personally liable to pay the tax. He will pay the tax by himself and together with any penal tax and interest thereon. Yeah. So that was all about employment income. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends and watch my next video, which I'll be looking at business income.